everyone. My name is Jason Boning. I am the Building Content Manager for CAD Learning. I oversee the development of any Autodesk product related to building design, such as Revit, Dynamo, Insight 360. And today we are going to focus on the new features in Revit 2018. And with us today I have Jack Trexler from US CAD. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, yeah, so this is Jack Trexler. Um, I'm a technical specialist with US CAD. I mainly focus on the MEP portion at US CAD, but I am involved in all of the AEC products from Autodesk with US CAD. Awesome. All right, Jack, you ready to take a look at some of the Revit 2018 new features? I am ready. All right. We'll break it down by disciplines. We'll start out with the core, what we'd call the core new features. That's That applies to all disciplines. And then we'll take a look at architectural specific and then uh, structure and then MEP. Or, or maybe we'll change it up in there. We'll see how it goes. So I think when we're looking at Revit 2018, when you first install it, what, what would you say the first thing you're going to notice, Jack? It looks a little cleaner. Uh, I can't I can't pinpoint it, but it looks a little cleaner. So. Yeah, I think that's a great way to describe it. So they they just kind of toned it down a little bit, and it has a flatter appearance. And one thing I noticed that the big R in the upper left corner is gone. So no more big R. Oh, it is. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, it is gone. Yeah. Now we have there's a little R, and then what we've referred to as the application menu has been replaced by the file tab. And so no more big R, which in my opinion was a staple of Revit. You know, we'd always be like, click on the big R in the upper left corner and it's no longer there. So that's exactly what I say during my training classes. Always <laughs> click on the big R. I guess you're gonna have to work on a, a new routine and throw in file tab and file tab, right. <laughs> Doesn't sound as exciting, I guess. Well, there is a little R there, so. We There's a little R. <laughs> yeah, I was I tried to click on it, but it really doesn't do anything. I think you can click like minimize or close, and that's about it. Anyways, but the same, all the same functionality that was in the application menu is now available in the file tab. So you just click the file tab, and you can open, save, print, all that good stuff is still there. And as Jack said, a lot cleaner look, which I think is nice. So I think that's a, that's probably the first thing you'll notice when you open up Revit 2018. But now let's let's jump into the specific updates and new features in Revit 2018. And so uh, we'll just kind of go down the list here that we have. Um, I think a really cool update is that you can now schedule model groups and Revit links. And so what do, you, what do you think about that, Jack? You think that's a good enhancement? I think this is going to be a good feature. Um, yeah. I, some of the projects that I worked with in the past where you're doing hotels and, um, and large facilities, you know, large typical facilities where you have typical rooms, uh, I think this might be a good, um, a good way to filter, search, and maybe even schedule um, you know, get the schedule properties out of a group, a model group for a typical room. Yeah, I think that's a great example. But with these large projects, especially something like hotels, where you could have, you know, who knows how many groups and you can now schedule them. And the other thing, you can add parameters to the model groups and RVT links category. And so that'll aid, and like you were saying, in, in filtering, scheduling, and really helping to document and, and just from a project management standpoint, I think it could help quite a bit as well. Yes, definitely. Cool. So check that out for sure. I'd, I'd say that's a big update. Another thing we have on the list here is subcategories for reference planes. And this is kind of a minor update. So when you're creating a reference plane, there's that subcategory drop down, And you've always been able to select a, a line style or a subcategory well, now there's an option to create a new subcategory in that dropdown. So it's a minor update, but if you're creating a lot of reference planes and, and you need to help just, you know, distinguish them, you can create those subcategories on the fly. Well, that'd be good. Another, so do you remember last year, Jack, they did, they added the rich text to text notes? 
Yes. And, and whenever, I know there was a lot of complaints with people upgrading projects and their text notes were, you know, kind of went a little crazy. Yes. Well, now they've, they've added the same update to labels. So now the rich text is available in labels. So, labels. you know, hopefully it won't mess it up as much <laughs> when you upgrade. But yes. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. And really, I only heard a couple of really bad ones that it, it got upgraded and it really messed up their text. But other than that, it's been pretty soft from That's upgrading great. to 17. So yeah, might be might be not too bad. Yeah, I my thought is it'll be minor, but uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully so. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, just be on the on the lookout for that. And so another thing is a verification of family constraints. And so this is kind of a, maybe a subtle update, but if when you're working in the family editor, if you basically, if you do something you shouldn't, that's, that's undesirable by Reddit, it'll warn you. And I think the specific way that you'll get a warning or an error is if you try to constrain a nested family to another, uh, another form, another piece of geometry, if you will. I think it'll pop up some type of warning that's like, hey, you shouldn't do this. And so that'll just kind of a check there by Revit. That that would be helpful because I know there are some families that you get into the project, you load it into the project, and it, it works fine in the family editor, and then it just completely blows up in the project. And <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe that's one of those verifications that we get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think hopefully this is the start of Revit kind of helping you out along the way, saying, hey, maybe you shouldn't do this. Think, think twice before you do this. Yes. Uh, so imported 3D shapes, uh, the update there is that you can, you can tag imported 3D shapes, and you can dimension to cut edges of 3D shapes. Oh, and, and you can place MEP connectors on imported 3D shapes, so that's helpful. In the, in the family editor as well. I just had this come up in a class just a couple of weeks ago where a customer was trying to insert in a 3D shape from somewhere that he got and he just couldn't do it. It, it was, it, it just, oh. it would either make the file too big or it just wouldn't go in at all. So. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, hopefully this will help and then you can now yeah, tag it or dimension it, and mm -hmm. hopefully that'll help. Uh, I guess a, a few minor things here. Tag all not the tag all not tag dialog has been modified a little bit. Just I don't, I don't think the functionality has really changed. There's some more parameter tool tips to help out. I think just Autodesk trying to kind of standardize some things a little bit. Uh, print is now available on the quick access toolbar by default. So that, that could be handy. The last core update we, we'll talk about is that geographic data is now available in linked DWG files. And I think to be more specific, when you use a geolocation in, I, I'd say, Civil 3D, we'd probably, probably see that quite a bit there, you can now link that in and acquire, when you acquire those coordinates, Revit will recognize that it's using a geolocation, and when you go to the location weather and site dialog, it'll it'll indicate that. So, I know, I, in my opinion, there's still a little bit of work to be done between getting coordinates really working like they should between, especially between Civil 3D and Revit. And so, hopefully, this is the start of of that really working seamlessly. When you acquire coordinates, you can acquire that geolocation, or if you set it up in Revit, you can link it by shared coordinates and use that geolocation. Yeah, it's good to see that they're working on it, because um, I know there's always been troubles in the past with that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I usually don't get into that directly. It's usually indirectly through an architect, because I'm MEP. Um, sure. But yeah, no, I think this will be good. A yeah. good start. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. All right. So now we'll move on to the architectural updates. If you want, I can kind of share some of those with you, Jack, and, and some of our listeners here. I would say there, there's really two, two big things, so multi-story stairs and railings. So that's kind of been some pain points in Revit for, for a while. 
and these are some improvements. So basically, in the past, when you've created a multi-story stair, there is a, I believe it was called multi-story top level. So you'd select the stair and you could set this parameter to create the multi-story stair. Well now, in 2018, you can select a stair and there's a new tool on the contextual ribbon called Select Levels. And you basically, you just select the levels that you want to extend the stair to. From a visual perspective, it's easier to create multi-story stairs. And then also the functionality behind it is a little better in that when you create that multi-story stair, the, the stairs with the same level height are grouped. So you can now edit them as a group and you still have the same multi-story stair as well. So the way I like to, to describe it is that there's three things you should be looking for. The actual multi-story stair object that is created, and then the groups that are created with the stairs that have the same level height, and then you still have the individual stairs at each level. And if needed, you can unpin them and edit them individually. Once again, I think just the multi-story stair process has been updated to, to make it more user-friendly. Railings, also on railings on multi-story stairs, they, they are grouped. The, so the railings that, that are attached to the stair that's used to create the multi-story stair, those are then grouped. And there are some added functionality in modifying railings. So you can now, when you edit the railing path, you can you can switch the endpoints. So if you have a, a railing type that uses a different post at the start and the end, you can now flip those. And even if you say you close the sketch on a multi-story railing, you can now switch the start point of where that railing actually begins in, in that multi-story stair. So just a little more, a little more functionality in how, how the railings work and, and attach to the stairs. And then I guess the last thing I would add is that you can host railings to a topo surface. And so that helps if, you know, if you're creating fences or maybe some type of guardrail on a site, you can now host it to a topo surface to help model that more accurately. Do you have any thoughts on that, Jack? Any from your perspective? Any? Uh, not too many. It looks like they're, they're still moving with the railings. I know last year they... Or I know they added oh, yes. roofs, the attachment to the roofs yes. for the railings. So yeah, they've add, they've they've added more onto that. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest. I think that it it's still there's still a little work to be done, but but yeah, it's getting better and better each year. So mm -hmm. oh yeah, <laughs> at least they're addressing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a good thing. The last thing I'll touch on here on on architecture updates, and and really I would say this is more of a a core update, but uh, coordination models. So you can now link coordination models from Navisworks. I think that's huge, in my opinion, because in Navisworks, you can link whatever you want or bring in whatever you want into Navisworks and then be able to link that to Revit is, yeah, that's that's awesome. Yes, I think that is huge, uh, getting that into the coordination model. Now, also, I, I just watched their video today, and uh, they said something about Infoworks. Now, I'm not I'm not an Infoworks user. Um, okay. But putting that in also, um, they're referencing the coordination models as well. The Navisworks coordination model inside um, Revit is, is huge. That's yeah, a good one. Definitely. The only thing I'll add is you can, it's basically a, an underlay or, or just a reference, so you can't snap to it. You can't select any of the objects. It's just, it's just kind of there. And so keep that in mind. Any of our listeners that are thinking they can, you know, maybe use it to trace over or to snap to, you're not going to be able to do that. It's just going to it's going to be there for visual reference. Okay, I think actually MEP is next on the list. Do you want to jump into the to the MEP enhancements? Yeah, I'll get into the MEP uh, MEP enhancements. Uh, I like how they're starting to break it out now. Um, last year was kind of a MEP only fabrication. I think there was one or two updates last year for designers. So now they're starting to break it up. Looks like we've got two updates for the MEP fabricators and detailers, and then a couple of for the designers and engineers. The first one is that I'm really excited about. I, I'm glad that they, they put this in. 
um, because I do get asked this, why does the Revit MEP parts fit together like Legos? Why do I have to place them in like Legos? Why okay. can't I just draw it like design ductwork? So now with 2018, you can draw it just like design ductwork with using the multi-point routing tool. I think nice. this is going to be really cool. Yeah, I agree. That's fun. Yeah, that's a good that's a good analogy. Like place them in there like Legos. Well. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like little building pieces. Yeah. Uh, so the next one we've got is slope pipe for um, the fabrication parts. If you place them pl uh, part by part, you can or call out your slope, and they will slope in Revit. Uh, and you can also use the same thing when using the multi-point uh, part lay a routing tool. You can define your slope. And uh, okay. one of the real cool things about this slope pipe is if you put a vertical in, it keeps it vertical. So if you change your main slope, to quarter inch to eighth inch and so on, all your verticals will stay vertical. So they they okay. they stay in that uh, vertical position instead of sloping it. That's good. Yeah, I think this was a, definitely a must-have. I mean, you got to have you got to be able to slope some of these yes. piping systems. I'm glad yeah, you did that. I think in the past it, we we really had to do this in CAD MEP and then import it into Revit, which was not a great workflow, but I think this is going to be a lot better. Good. So the next items we have is for designers. So designers, engineers, and the first one I want to talk about is the analytical pipe connections. Now what we can do is we, we can lay out our equipment, we can lay out our major piping run, and this is for closed loop piping. So when we got our major runs out, we can connect our equipment to um, the pipe analytically. So you we don't have to worry about offsetting and connecting directly to that piece of equipment. We can just basically connect to that pipe analytically with the equipment and we can now start getting some of the flow data and pressure drops. That's Yeah, that's another huge update in my opinion. So I actually have a lot of experience in, in mechanical design and you know, you want some of those calculations, but you got to be able to, you have to connect it up and, you know, you're drawing all the little one inch piping to try to get it to connect to your main just so you can get some flow calculations. And yes, that's nice. Just be able to pop in an analytical connector and let it go. Yes. And then the architect comes and changes everything. And <laughs> then you, all that work that you did, you got to redo it. <laughs> so, yeah, really like that. And then the next one is just the flow and pressure drop calculations. They're starting to build on this, uh, which is good to see, really good to see. Um, I like to use Revit as a engineering software instead of just a drafting software. So Definitely. So yeah, and then we've got, we're moving into the next one for uh, HVAC designers and engineers, is now we can um, start putting outdoor air input parameters for building and space types. So this is a this is a really nice one. In my experience designing in South Florida, outdoor air is very crucial. The ventilation tight, the ventilation uh, air flows and all of that and having to be able to tie those parameters to building and space types is is really good thing. Definitely. I agree. So I, I'm actually based here in Houston, Texas. Yeah, you, you don't want to be off by, you know, even 50, 100 CFM on that outdoor air and, and you know, start sizing up your systems and be off on that. So that's a definitely a crucial update that, that we needed. So I'm yes. glad to see that. And another thing on top of that, too, is that now we can edit those, um, uh, those space types and building types. Um, we can make our own now. That'll be good. So, and then the last and final thing for uh, MEP designers is for electrical, and this always comes up in my electrical classes. It, this <laughs> always comes up, is how does it calculate voltage drop when you're connecting to a panel? How does Revit even get that? Well, it's usually just an A to B, <laughs> point to point. 
And now what we can do is we can edit the circuit path. If you have a circuit that is low and that needs to go up in the ceiling or, or maybe even up a couple of floors and then come back down to an electrical room, we can, we can lay that path out and it will um, connect to our voltage drops. I know that's been a, a pain point for well, as long as I can remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's awesome. All right, well... The last discipline we have to cover here is structure. So I can I can run through some of those. So there's a lot of updates in 2018 around steel connections. So they introduced that last year in 2017. And in 2018, so one of the major updates is being able to edit the primary member and then the order of the secondary members. Method that they have available now in 2018 is a drag and drop method. So basically there's a, you know, a dot, if you will, at each connection, and you can just drag and drop those to define the order and the primary member in that connection. So and also, in, in addition to being able to update the, the order of the priority in those connections, the, the steel connections for Revit add-in has several new connections available. So you can download that add-in and use those in your model. The, I believe Revit can now analyze custom framing elements in those steel connections. So that's a, that's a nice update. And when editing the rebar constraint behavior, you can now, that, that mode, if you will, the, I can't remember what it's called exactly, but edit rebar constraint, that you can now use that mode in a 3D view. And so that helps to visualize the constraint references and just make it a little bit easier when you're when you're editing that constraint behavior of your rebar. Other than that, I, th I think that's the majority of the the structural updates. So, Jack, you have anything to add? Uh, I'm glad to see actual connectors in structural instead of floating <laughs> beams to floating beams. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, I, I think that's really cool. Um, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes the models look a little yes. more realistic. Uh, I think the last thing that I would add is if you if you see some new updates that you're you're kind of unsure, like hey, I don't I don't see this listed in the 2018 updates. If you are not familiar with the 2017.1 or .2 updates, those are also rolled into Revit 2018. So you may want to check out the documentation on those updates as well, because though like I said, those are now available in Revit 2018. So. I appreciate everybody joining us, and if you are not on Revit 2018, I encourage you to go get it and, and check it out. All right. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.